you're watching TVC Breakfast. The United Nations says in the past 12 years, more than a thousand journalists have been killed for reporting the news and bringing information to the public. Tomorrow is the international day to end impunity for crimes against journalists. In Nigeria, journalists are increasingly becoming exposed to attacks, especially from top government officials and security agencies. A recent report by Amnesty International disclosed that uh, 19 journalists have been arrested and detained illegally by security operatives in 2019. Of these cases, one has caught the attention of many Nigerians. The arrest and detention of journalist Agba Jalingo by the police over an article he published seeking the whereabouts of 500 million naira approved and released for floating a microfinance bank in Cross River State. On Wednesday, the Federal High Court in Calabar again refused to grant uh, Mr. Jalingo bail. He was arrested on the 22nd of August and taken for trial after spending 34 days in detention. Joining us from Abuja is a journalist and former presidential candidate, Victor Ohai. Good morning, Mr. Ohai. Thank you for joining us on TVC Breakfast. Now, uh, this year we celebrate uh, 20 years of uh, uh, democracy and yet we find that Nigeria is part of uh, in the world index ranking for impunity against journalists we find Nigeria ranked 12th how did we find ourselves uh, in this uh, on this list and what really is the challenge here well it's it's a sad testament you know that that is the situation 20 years um, down the line. Under a democratic regime, it is expected that um, the fourth estate of the realm is a critical uh, partner in the democratic uh, process. And so it is expected that apart from the judiciary, the executive, the legislature, and um, the judiciary, executive, legislature, and uh, yes, the, 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 the media is supposed to be like a watchdog um, to, to all of them. And that's the only conscience of the, of, the, of, the, of the common man. And so, if you recall, it helped us in the democratic process from June 12 and, and afterwards. And so that is a very critical element. And if you silent, if, the, if that aspect of our, democ of our democratic um, process, or, or, or if you like, partnership is silenced, um, it, it's, it's really a, a terrible one. How we found ourselves in this, which is the main question here, is um, that you know, usually when you, when you, impunity, the way it starts is it, it's, it starts with one incident. And if people just look at it like an isolated incident, then it progresses, and before you know, you understand what's happening, it becomes almost institutionalized. Uh, what happened in Cross River is an abuse of power by the governor. Is an abuse of uh, the process. Um, I mean, because first of all, the report and all that is involved for me, not just for me, is, is a civil matter, purely civil matter. And so um, I think the police itself somewhat is, is complicit because a civil matter to have converted it, you know, for the police to have gotten involved with it was not, was not right in the first place. Now, Agba Jalingo was picked up from Lagos, taken down to um, uh, Calabar. Even if he was guilty, even if it was a criminal offense, within 24 hours, he should have been charged to court and granted bail. Yeah. And then the police now decided, probably with the government, uh, with the governor of Cross River, or the government rather, uh, decided to hang a treason charge on him. And what that simply means, I know that treason is not bailable. And so what has now happened is that he has, he has had to remain, you know, uh, you know in, under confinement for this long period of time, All right. sending a signal to other journalists that they cannot just report things anyhow. This is something the judiciary should decide, but the case as is, is only just getting to the courts right now and is still being held because of right. that singular charge of treason. All right, Mr. Ohio, now, in all of this now, uh, this impunity, first yes. of all, you mentioned that journalists are critical partners in a democratic process. Now, with yes. this impunity, yes. how does um, this affect our profession and how does it affect uh, the growth and development of democracy in Nigeria? 
Well, obviously, uh, you know, um, if you silence the journalist, you have practically seized the voice of the masses. Because that's, that's the only way the masses can talk. Um, and so it's, that, that, that kills the freedom of speech for journalists. It kills the freedom of speech for the ordinary citizens because the journalist reports you know, um, the, the ordinary man, the common man, and he takes the opinion of the common man. That is not healthy for us at all. And I think that the, the executive and other arms of government should recognize the fact that we are partners in the democratic process and that there's a need to protect that institution. Because you see, it may, it, you may not find what they say favorable today, but that same media will be the one that will save you tomorrow when you're in government. And you are, we have seen it happen time and time again. When things happen to those in government, they now go back to the media you know, for help because that is the only way their voices can be heard. And so there's a need to see the media as a partner. Okay. They are not paid partners, they are not elected, All right. but it is critical for, 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 our, for our democracy. We had uh, Fisai Oshui on board do a report on uh, the rot in uh, the police uh, force, <coughs> so to speak. And uh, after that report, and even in our correctional uh, facilities, after that report, we began to hear that there were threats to his life and to have him arrested and he had to go into hiding. Because a lot of persons expected reaction in terms of penalties on those that were you know, fingered in that report. One wonders the implication of this on the profession and even on the society because if these issues are not exposed, what happens? No, can you take the last bit again? I didn't quite hear you. Now, I'm saying that uh, one expected that um, after that report, there would be some reaction from those who were uh, the authorities with regards to those who were fingered in that report. But then one wonders the implication of all of this on journalists who are being threatened for the works that they do and even to the society. Yeah, that is, that is a worrying part of, of this whole exercise because it does appear as if there's a deliberate ploy to silence um, the voice, you know, of, 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 of the people. Um, an allegation has been made. What would have followed naturally would have been a situation where the journalists, I mean, the, the EFCC or the ICPC would investigate the case and then, uh, and then follow up. Because the job of a journalist, particularly we, we talk about the death of investigative journalism in this country. Uh, and then when the journalist attempts to investigate, then he's vilified for doing what would, should normally be uh, in the course of his work. The journalist is a fourth estate, journalism is a fourth estate of the realm. It is supposed to be the watchdog of society, the voice of the people. And, and so, what this sh should naturally have followed, but nothing has happened. Instead, what do we find? Um, the journalist involved in this case, Agba Jalingo, has been slammed with three charges, as amended recently now, terrorism, um, um, treasonable felony, and an attempt to overthrow the government of Cross River State. And this is all geared towards silencing him and keeping him under incarceration. Now, that should not be the case. This was purely a civil matter. In the course of reporting, if you find that you're defamed or, or, or that you're, 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 if you find that you've been defamed, the normal thing to do would be to go to court. Uh, this is a purely civil case, but what has been done in this case, and with the, with the complicity of the police, obviously, is to trump up charges that will keep him under permanent incarceration. And his health is deteriorating daily. He's not getting access to medical care. And I hope that he doesn't die in detention. Now, what is happening there is a metaphor. What, is, what seems to be happening generally now, there's just seems, there appears to be impunity. Um, a lot of um, governors, uh, a lot of uh, public officers, rather, uh, uh, they, they seem to be getting away with, with a lot of this. And you find a situation right now where journalists can't practice their art and their profession freely anymore. Mm. Okay, a, a lot of um, issues um, might have happened as regards that, but one other one is, uh, issue that has come to the fore 
in but both but, but in the past and recently is the fact that the profession is not lucrative enough for the professionals involved in it now what's the future of the journalism profession in, in, the, in the light of everything happening now I don't want to use the word not lucrative I mean the lucrative appears transactional uh, that for me is not a compliment to uh, uh, the profession of journalism um, it's a very noble profession. It's the only other profession that is regarded as an arm of democracy. Uh, the, the judiciary is just, I mean, okay, the, there's a judiciary as well. And so it's a very noble, that's the word I use, noble profession. Um, yes, uh, journalists may not be among the richest uh, professionals and all that, but that's a job, a, a job that people do out of passion and out of, and out of joy. And when you see an average journalist, it's not so much because of the money involved that he does his job, or an investigative journalist, for instance. What he does, he does as a sense of duty, as, 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 as something that he derives joy from just doing. And, to a man, and, and, and he owes that to society, you know? And, and we have to be grateful to him as well. Now, what is happening is, with what is going on, obviously the profession has been threatened. Because in the normal course of your duty, nobody, 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 nobody goes after a policeman for arresting people in the normal course of his duty. Nobody goes after a lawyer for arresting them in the normal course of their, their duty. Nobody goes after the military for doing their job in the normal course of their duty. And so why should that of the journalists be, I mean, be, be, be different? Okay. People should be allowed to practice their job. In this particular case, if you find out something that is wrong, the job of the journalist is to throw it out and say, this is what is going on. And then it is for the, 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 the uh, uh, if you like now, that arm of the executive, which is um, uh, the police, to go and investigate and then take it to the judiciary. But if you feel that your, your rights have been trampled upon as a citizen, either by way of defamation and all that, the normal thing is to go and go back to the judiciary and get justice. All right. But All that's right. not what is happening. All right, uh, Victor, hi. Thank you for your time on TVC Breakfast. Now, we have to look forward now. What is the role of the justice system and even the media as a body in this case of fighting impunity? Because justice, or the judiciary rather, is said to be the last hope of the common man. Well, <clears throat> I think the judiciary uh, should recognize uh, the role of the fourth estate of the realm, uh, the journalists, because the truth is um, when, when, when forces come after the judiciary, whatever it is, uh, they will still need the journalists to speak on their behalf. The journalist is uniquely positioned to speak, to be the voice of the voiceless. Justice is is in, in the terrain of the judiciary, but the voice and the conscience of, of a people uh, lies with the, with, the, with the journalists. And so there's a symbiosis between, um, there should be between, among all arms of government, but especially between the judiciary and, and, and uh, the fourth estate. Now in this case, what we have seen is a case of impunity um, that has persisted over the years. Agba Jalingo's case is um, a case in point. And it is important that uh, going forward, uh, we, 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 the judiciary in particular, should not allow innocent journalists to be persecuted you know, unjustly. Uh, we have seen a case of trumped up charges here of uh, treasonable felony, of uh, terrorism and an attempt to overthrow a government only because a journalist in the process of doing his job uh, decided, I mean, was investigating a case, you know, of, 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 of corruption. And so that has got to change if, if the country as a whole has to move forward. With the happenings in the profession, in the industry, of course, and with the arrest of journalists and the impunity going all around, how does this place uh, us? in the international community? Well, it's, it's not a very good um, sign, and this is why I think uh, the federal government should take an interest in what's going on in Cross River, and especially in the case of Agba Jalingo. For me, it's a metaphor for what is happening with 
um, in, with uh, press freedom in, in Nigeria. And if there's no press freedom in any country, that country is obviously perceived in very negative, in very negative light. And so that's not very good for us internationally. And the truth is, whether we like it or not, the, the media is very, very powerful. If you persecute local media and international media decide to, you know, um, point the searchlight on, on any government at all or, or on any nation, the consequences are, are there indeed, uh, which is why it is often said that the pen is mightier than the sword. And so I think in the interest of justice, in the interest of uh, press freedom, in the interest of, um, you know, giving democracy its true voice, it is important that uh, uh, the media is not muzzled in, in, in any way and uh, not emasculated in the normal course of, its, of doing its duty. All right, uh, Victor, hi. Thank you for your time on TVC Breakfast.